I'd like to call to order the eighth meeting of the 2014-2015 Common Council. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 14 present. Alderman Donahue and Alderman Lassard are. And those, both those are excused. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Never forget where you've been, never lose sight of where you're going, and never take for granted the people who travel the journey with you. Thank you very much. Next, would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Those minutes are before us for any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to council appointments. Alderman Hammond. Steve McLean. Uh, the first one, uh, dated today is date, honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Nancy Manchin to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Marge Segali, whose term expires 4-30-2016, signed by the mayor. And now Alderman Hammond. The other is one that was brought in at the last council meeting. Uh, Appointing Sarah Sweefel to be considered for appointment to the Board of Marina Park and Forestry Commissioners to fill the unexpired term of Vicki Hall, whose term expires 4 25 2016, signed by the Mayor. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to confirm Sarah Sweefel. Second. It's moved and second to uh, approve the appointment. Is there any discussion on the appointment to the Library Board? I mean, to the uh, Board of Marina Parks and Forestry? Seeing none. Would the, plea, would the clerk please call the roll on passage? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to our program. Wendy Schmitz, the director of the Senior Activity Center, is here to give us an update on uh, the Senior Activity Center operations. Wendy, please come forward. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to give you an annual update and to be introduced to council members who may not know about the Senior Activity Center. The center operates on a collaborative partnership between the city of Sheboygan and the friends of the Senior Activity Center. The city supplies the equivalent of just over two staff and pays the operational costs of the building. <clears throat> the friends pay for the programming and any improvements. Many of the people who attend the Senior Activity <coughs> Center are active friends members and they are currently 500 of them. They and the board do all of the fundraising. We are a very <coughs> busy place. Most of our programs are led by senior volunteers who teach classes, escort trips, plant and weed our lovely flower beds, prepare and serve meals, our program leaders, clean the kitchen, paint our rooms, you name it, we do it ourselves. Last August, we were fortunate to be chosen as a site for one of the street art projects and worked with internationally known street artist Gaia. This year, we have worked with Mac Maker and Robert Karimi, artists in residence at John Michael Kohler Art Center. In fact, yesterday, our team shared first place in the grill-off competition at the art car. We had the advantage of Marilyn Montemayor as our chef. And that's a challenge to Chief Romas <laughs> for next year. <laughs> as you will see in a moment, 
The friends have spent the past year renovating our center, and we are very proud of what has been achieved. My staff, volunteers, our business partners, husbands, families, neighbors, and, and board members all work to make this happen. Since June of last year, we have been in a transition as longtime staff retired. Marion Health worked for over 30 years. In order to keep her programs going, three senior volunteers offered to step in until the position is filled again. That's the kind of commitment and enthusiasm we enjoy. We also volunteer for the city. We supply visitor greeters at the help desk in City Hall. We recently blew up 1,500 beach balls for the July 4th celebration. And last Thursday, we packed over 400 lunches for day of caring volunteers across the county. But our greatest challenge is getting the word out. We have a newsletter. I write a column in the Moxie magazine. We have a wonderful website, our own TV show, and regularly appear in the press. And I would encourage you to look us up on Facebook. One of the goals set by the Friends organization this year was to develop a marketing piece to use in presentations. And I'd like to share that with you now. Thank you. I enjoy this place because I meet a lot of good friends. I love this place, <coughs> I really do. Oh, I, I could tell people to come down here because there's something almost for everybody. You can just kick back and relax, do yourself and people. <coughs> I just enjoy coming here. Our mission is to keep seniors engaged in their community. So the community of seniors here and the community at large. Most people are very surprised at how active the people are that are here and how involved the people are and how friendly it is. When you come into the Senior Activity Center, you know, someone is there to give you a, a tour and they give you the newsletter. It can be overwhelming. You don't have to do everything. Just find something you're interested in and then once you start coming, you'll feel a part of it. My husband came here every day, shot pool in the afternoon with his, with his guys. And uh, I would go swimming, he would go shooting pool. Got to talk to Wendy, talking to Wendy about Tai Chi. I had been doing that for years, but I always thought I would like to teach it sometime. And first asked her if they had a class, and she said, no, they didn't have one at present. But I said, well, I'd be willing to teach it. I've been here ever since. Exercise programs and, and classes have changed over the course of time that I've been here. Zumba is a new class that we teach here. I still do line dancing. We brought in weights. We bring in um, different um, equipment. We are very fortunate to have use of uh, a swimming pool. And we use it through the Sheboygan Area School District. <coughs> and uh, we run classes a couple times a day. I started coming here with another friend who was here. He started the senior club. It's a good reason to get together with people. It's the camaraderie is great, and then it's a good reason to <coughs> We do lots of volunteering in the community. And then the <coughs> thing that sets us apart from other senior centers is our relationship with John Michael Cola Art Center. We're literally just down the hill. I was involved in the life and writing class, and uh, it was interesting, and in some ways, I think that got me into something else through John Michael Kohler Art Center. So the senior center is not just coming here to do things. We, it, it gets you interested in other things, too. Last year, I went to Branson with the uh, senior center, and we had a wonderful time. We have good hosts. They, they do things, you know, map everything out for us, which I like. You don't have to figure out what to do or what. They have that all figured out for you. It's a fun time. Eat and drink. <laughs> Be merry. When my father died in 1999, 
My mother had this new void in her life. And she would take that those six blocks or so, come here every day almost. She volunteered here. She belonged to the Scarlet Hatters. This is her picture. It gave her so many friendships. She just enjoyed her life. When I come here, it's almost like a home for me because I came here with my mother at times. The hardest thing to do is come into the building and admit that you're a senior. It seems to be the hardest thing. You know, you talk to people and uh, you say you're going to the senior center. And, you know, it, it's probably the same thought I had in the beginning. Oh, you know, it's just a bunch of old people, but it's not. I mean, that's fantastic. They're the same age. I mean, and, and you're young at heart. You know, it, it, the, the adventure is there. Now you can do more. In some of my classes, I just, I'm amazed. I say, well, how long have you known each other? Like, well, whenever this class started, they've met in class and they are friends. It's just, that that is very, very rewarding, the social part of it. There's something here for everybody. And if there isn't something that you like, talk to Wendy. She might get something going or she'll put you in charge of it. <laughs> Wendy, thank you very much for your report and for sharing your new video with us. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. Uh, yes, this evening, first on the list is Dulcie Johnson. <coughs> Can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Mayor Vandersteen, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, Aldermen and Citizens. The information I will share with you is based on data received in a Freedom of Information Act request to Nancy Buss for revenues and expenses related to the operation of the ambulance service in the fire department in 2013. As you know, the ambulance budget only includes salaries and benefits for four firefighters, but operating three ambulances 24-7 requires 21 firefighters. Salaries and benefits for the four firefighters was $277,448. Salaries and benefits for 17 additional firefighters was $1,179,154. EMS calls account for 75% of the incidents that firefighters respond to. 75% of 1,179,154 is $884,366, bringing the total personnel expenses of the ambulance service to $1,168,814. Adding other budgeted expenses brings the total <coughs> expenses to $1,473,530, including $121,314 for contracted billing services. Total billings were $3,073,825. Actual collections were $1,288,934, or 42% of billings. Adjustments or billings that were not collected were 58% of billings. Subtracting expenses from actual collections results in a loss of $184,596. But that's not the whole story. <clears throat> These figures do not include any administrative costs for fire department staff. And based on my firsthand experience in seeking information about ambulance calls for a single day in 2013, I can tell you that it takes more than one person to provide simple information, clearly indicating that several fire department employees, other than the firefighters, are involved in running the ambulance service. To answer my simple question, former Chief Herman consulted a notebook. His secretary searched for information on her computer Twice, Chief Herman went into Deputy Chief Butler's office, and at one point, a fourth person came out of an office and added information. But the department does not figure one dollar of the salaries and benefits for any of these personnel as part of the operating cost of the ambulance service. 
Fond du Lac, however, includes administrative costs when figuring the cost of their ambulance service. Their department is organized a bit differently than the Sheboygan Fire Department, but they include 50% of the salaries of their fire chief, three assistant fire chiefs, an administrative assistant, and a records clerk, and 75% of the salaries for their paramedics. The Sheboygan Fire Department staff includes the chief, an assistant chief, a deputy chief, three battalion chiefs, an administrative assistant, and a secretary. Indeed, Deputy Chief Butler is identified in the 2013 annual report as Deputy Chief EMS slash Health and Safety Emergency Management. And as I recall, he was hired late in 27 to manage the ambulance service for the fire department. I did not seek the salary figures for these positions, but if administrative personnel or costs were added, the actual cost of providing the ambulance service would be much higher and the loss much greater. In closing, I would point out that the proposed fire department budget for 2015 is almost $100,000 more than this year. In 2013, the department responded to only 53 structure fire calls. That's less than one call per month per station. Of course, having only a few fires is a positive, but it begs the question of how the department should be staffed. We know from experience that living next door to a fire station is no guarantee of a good result. And when the idea of some paid on call firefighters is raised, the firefighters object. And yet half of the department's firefighters live outside the city where they are dependent on volunteer fire services to protect their family and property. And that apparently is okay with them. Go figure. I'm not smart enough to explain that. Thank you, Dulcie. <clears throat> <clears throat> Next on the list is Milt Storm. <clears throat> and Milt, can I have your home address, please? Yes, yeah, so it's 1736 Marvin Court. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Well, I wrote out my uh, essay here, but uh, if you can read this, I mean, I'll give you an A+. Plus. But then, of course, I wrote it. I want to thank the mayor and especially the young gentle ladies in the city, city's clerk office who always assist me very ably in speaking engagements. I have been a resident of the city of Sheboygan for 56 years, arriving here in June of 1957. That was when I completed my obligation in the U.S. Army as a radar instructor at the Signal School at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Because of my spiritual background, I have self-anointed myself as a motivational speaker. Now, if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Now, as I uh, have now noticed in the Sheboygan press, that there are some positions here in the city, especially the city clerks, that they are trying to make appointed. And now I also read in the Sheboygan press that the city attorney's office, because of the retirement of Steve McLean, is also going to be a, a appointed position. Although at least that's what they like. That means that the voters there can no longer elect. Well, what would be next? Will the mayor be appointing the vacated automatic positions when they leave before their term is up? Now, knowing the mayor, that wouldn't, would be, wouldn't be a bad idea at all. I can vouch for that. You know, he needs accomplished or a, a congratulations once in a while rather than some of the negative times that some people say to him. My analogy is to change something. My analogy is why change something that's been working for 80 years. If the council would like to improve government, shut down these idiot boxes that we have on the wall. That's what we used to call the television sets over at Advanced TV when we found customers that had such dilapidated sets and weren't even worth fixing. So my suggestion would be is to change the color. On the, now when Wendy Smith puts up, it's nice. But when you look at this bluish screen, why? I mean, it's a disaster. You need a telescopic 
lens on a big telescope to see that. So here's my suggestion. And Dave, I know, would appreciate that. Especially the council members. I don't know, when they sit on these soft cushions that the taxpayers pay for, why can't we do something with the color on these screens? I would suggest that we would give it a a yellow printing background on a red background with a green border around it. See, that would make it green energy sufficient. Well, that's about it for me. And, and maybe I will continue on the next one and give you a... I always loved the ladies' uh, the clerk's department because with their melodic voices, and their, it's much better than the gruff voices that some of these council men have. Thank you, Milt. That would be that would be it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next is the mayor's announcements. Uh, there's a big festival this weekend on South Pier, the Meesfields Lakeshore Weekend. All proceeds going to promote to help out Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. Hope that people will keep that on their calendar. And then on Tuesday, August fifth will be uh, Sheboygan County's National Night Out. That'll start at 5 o'clock at Fountain Park and uh, continue with a walk around the area uh, till 7.30. With that, we'll go on the consent agenda. Um, let's see. Item 2.18 will lie over, so that one won't be a part of the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage with the exception of 2.18, which will lie over. Second. Then moved and seconded. Um, under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to pull uh, document 2.4 forward for a separate vote, please. 2.4 is an RC by finance recommended filing a document submitting a memo from Attorney McLean as requested by Alderman Bourne, Bellinger, and Heidemann regarding the garbage fee and levy limit use. Uh, if I could continue, uh, I wasn't able to make the finance committee meeting last Monday night. Something came up, and I was just wondering, I believe Alderman Bellinger was in charge of that meeting. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, Alderman Bellinger could fill the the members of the council in on the discussion and the rationale for asking this document to be filed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, the rationale for filing the document is, is because the, um, the city budget was um, before the finance committee and um, it was, that budget was referred to the five standing committees and once all the aldermen have a chance to go through and look at the detail of the budget. They can pick and choose uh, what they want to include in the budget, what they would like to get rid of, what they would like to outsource, and they can deal with the issue of the, um, the garbage fee in that manner. So um, it was the thought of the Finance Committee that um, the whole budget process, which was sent to the five standing committees, which we're gonna deal with tonight, um, that would accomplish this exact same thing as this document. So it was, most, the motion was to file it, and that's what was done. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Heideman. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Again, uh, my name was on this document, and one of the important things that within the memo uh, I have highlighted, it's recommended that the council act on this issue sooner than later. What the Finance Committee did, I believe just kicked it down the road so that once we got to our committees, we got the budgets, we're not actually working with the true numbers. We don't know whether there's going to be a garbage fee or there's not going to be a garbage fee. And we have a number of members of, uh, on the council now that never dealt with that issue. And I think it would have been easier and cleaner for them to work on those budgets had that issue been resolved first, as opposed to submitting a budget that either had a garbage fee or didn't have a garbage fee. Thank you for those comments. I'd like to ask the city attorney to comment on this. I mean, this was a document with an opinion by him, and uh, he could maybe comment on that and the subsequent steps that would need to be taken if we were going to extend the garbage fee. Steve? Uh, thank you. I was asked to uh, put that together. Uh, the basic gist of it is that 
uh, council should not rely just on the budget process itself uh, uh, to address this garbage fee situation. There is a resolution that was adopted several years ago now that uh, set the rate, uh, reduced it after a year, I believe, uh, uh, to its current rate, and sunsetted it at the end of this year. Uh, in order to address whether to continue that or not, or change it in some fashion, um, that needs to be done separate and apart from the budget itself. Uh, just the mere fact that you put numbers in the budget does not, uh, is not sufficient to create uh, authority to impose that fee. So uh, I guess the point of the memo again was that if uh, there is a desire to either uh, impose that fee or not to impose that fee, uh, my opinion that the sooner that the council address that uh, issue, uh, again, separate and apart necessarily from the budget, that it would be best to do that. And Steve, what would be the best way for them to approach that? Um, I guess my suggestion would be if someone uh, wishes to uh, introduce a document to establish a garbage fee to continue it uh, at its current rate, uh, they would need to bring in a resolution to do that and have that go through finance committee and the council. Thank you very much. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, I, I certainly respect the opinion of, of Attorney McLean. Um, I, I would like to, and I understand his, his uh, perspective that it needs to be dealt with separately, but at the same time, you cannot deal with the $900,000 or $900, issue in a vacuum and not look at the consequences for the budget. If you're going to keep the budget, there's going to be ramifications, or keep the garbage fee, there's going to be ramifications. And if you're going to eliminate it, there's certainly going to be some significant ramifications because it's going to have a direct impact on the budget. So you need to look at both together in making that decision. You cannot deal with this separately in, in a vacuum and you know just say, okay, we don't want this fee, let's get rid of it, because there are significant consequences. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. All, all this document was was a memo from the city attorney. That's correct. It doesn't change anything. So simply filing this document doesn't make the garbage fee go away or stay. So to have this argument right now is a complete waste of time. The budget is being referred to the standing committees as of tonight. That's where we can have the conversation as to what's going to happen with next year's budget. So fighting over this document, once again, is a complete waste of time. All it was is a memo <coughs> from our city attorney. We all know what's on the horizon. We either have to keep it or we have to get rid of it. And if we're going to get rid of it, we're probably going to have to make cuts. It's really simple. It truly is. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Boren. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, I would agree with Chairman Heidemann of the Public Works Department. If these, if these documents that Mr. Amodio is submitting to the standing committees, uh, I don't want to have to go over this twice. It would be nice to know before this, this, this document goes to the Public Works Committee and the other committee I'm on, Salary and Grievance, what the wishes of the council are. Are we going to have a garbage fee or aren't we? And if we are going to have it, it makes the review of the Public Works budget a lot more simple. If this gets referred to the Public Works Committee next Tuesday night, and I don't know whether there's going to be a garbage fee or there, or there isn't going to be a garbage fee, to me, that's a waste of time because in all likelihood, it's going to go back to Public Works again to review if the council would decide that they do not want the garbage fee. So I would like to know ahead of time whether there's going to be a garbage fee or whether there is not going to be a garbage fee, and then I can approach the committee, the, the uh, uh, have a meaningful discussion and the committees that I belong to and possibly attend some of the other committees where I'm interested in and then uh, uh, come forward with a document that either has it or doesn't have it and make the appropriate cuts but to send it to public work ne next Tuesday night without knowing whether there's going to be a garbage fee or not a garbage fee to me is just a waste of time. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Quite an interesting conversation over a memo, but I would say um, a couple things. First off, the garbage fee is set to sunset. That was part of the ordinance. 
and unless a resolution comes in to the opposite, it sunsets. So the committee chairs should plan accordingly. So to make the comment that it's a waste of time to submit it to committees, not knowing whether the garbage fee, the current ordinance, the law of the land, if you will, says that that garbage fee sets on Jan or December 31st, 2014, uh, 2014, without any other resolution coming in to the contrary. So for the committees, we're not to the budget yet, but on this matter, again, thank you, Mr. Uh, Attorney McLean, for submitting this. It's very helpful. Um, but at this point, we've held it in finance um, at nauseum, and I think everybody has had an opportunity to review it, understands what the issues are. Um, and again, unless a resolution comes in uh, stating otherwise, the garbage fee is sunset. The garbage fee is set to sunset on December 31st. So that's how we should be planning. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Hammond, I think um, the finance director, Nancy Buss, sent out an email to all the aldermen today that those budgets have to be back from committees, I believe, by August 24th. So they have some time to Correct. consider that. It's not going to be just be the next meeting that they have. Correct. Alderman Boren. Thank you. Again, I got a question for Attorney McLean. Uh, in your document, uh, in your memo, uh, Attorney McLean, you have a sentence in there right after on the... Uh, it's on the first page, let's see, the one, two, three, fourth paragraph, right after it says it is recommended that the council act on this issue sooner rather than later. And then it says, if the council were to extend the special charge into 2015, now, now by amending the resolution 128.11.12, uh, any uh, levy <coughs> limit issue would be avoided. Uh, is it possible for us to vote on that tonight, Attorney McLean? without having a resolution come in. You've got, you, you cite the resolution in your memo. Uh, would it be possible for us to vote on whether to extend that special charge tonight? Uh, Alderman Bohr, not in my opinion. No, all that you have before you is a recommendation from the Finance Committee to file the memo that I drafted. Could I make? Could I make a motion then not to file it and vote on extending uh, resolution 128.11.12? Can I do that tonight? I don't believe so. <clears throat> you might be able to uh, make a motion to uh, have proper documents drawn to do whatever you want to do. I'll make that motion, uh, Attorney McLean, if you'd assist me in, a, in a, uh, formulating those documents and uh, then I'll, uh, I'll uh, look for some other members to co-sponsor for it with me. So Alderman Bourne, you want the, uh, the document to be drawn to do what? To uh, extend, thank you, Mayor, extend resolution 128.11-12 uh, to extend the special charge into the 2015 uh, budget. Okay, that motion's before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. Do we have a second, Joe? Yes, second. Yep. Hold on just a second. Is this a roll call? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, hold on. All those in favor of the motion, um, please uh, register your vote, aye or nay. And this, this is a motion to draft a resolution regarding the garbage fee to extend Res 128 into the 2015 budget. That's what you're voting on. Okay, the voting. Again, you would not be voting yes or no on the garbage question. You'd just be voting on drafting drafting a document that would come into council. Jim, I don't have yours. Oh, it didn't come up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't see it. Looking at the wrong screen. Jody. Nine eyes, five no's. Motion passes. And I think we still have uh, item 2.4 on the floor. That, that motion I don't think uh, had anything to do with filing that. Does that still need to be voted on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The motion was to accept and adopt. There was no additional motion. No, made. it was just motion to accept and adopt. 
So item 2.4, um, is it okay with uh, Alderman Bourne if we still consider that as that filing as part of the consent agenda? Yes, Mayor. All right, thank you. Then the consent agenda is before us and I believe there was uh, an item on 2.8. Chad? Thank you, Mayor. 2.8 was a contract to sell the property on the west side of the interstate to Becknell Industries for a new manufacturing facility. The Finance Committee had approved that when they met last Monday and referred it back to the Council for adoption. There's been a couple minor changes, so on everybody's Council desk I put the new contract and I would uh, ask you to take a look. The only, the two changes are on page 2 of 15 on the bottom. Um, the conditions about conditions pre preceding the closing and there was some language in there about um, we the city getting some a contract from Wagner excavating who's encroaching on this property <coughs> to have them vacate this before we close uh, Jim and I met with them and they agreed to vacate the property as of December 1st 2014 so we've got a letter signed from them so we amended that contract language to include that that uh, Wagner excavating would be off the premises by December 1st the other change that's major is on page uh, 12 of 15 and it's the post closing utility agreement in there, they we have to extend sewer and water to this serve, to this property under the interstate. Um, we've got that budgeted. It's actually under design right now with the Public Works Department. Um, in that uh, timeline, they originally had in there the um, later of the following, and it was December 31st, 2014, um, or B, the date at that is 75 days after the date of closing, or 75 days after the commencement of construction. We, as a uh, staff, felt there's a chance we may not meet that December 31st, 2014 deadline, so we have uh, negotiated with them to a February 1st, 2015 deadline, which the Public Works Department and engineering staff feel is uh, very doable. So those are the major changes from the document that went to the council. As staff, we don't see any issues with it, and we would recommend continuing forward and uh, accepting this contract as presented. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion to amend the uh, document per uh, Chad's uh, presentation. So second. Then moved and seconded to amend the document per the presentation by City Planner Chad Pelichek. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none. All those? All in favor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So the consent agenda is before us with those changes to item 2.8. Uh, including the filing 2.4 and 2.18 will be held over. Is there any other further discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Okay, let's, can I get an all eyes please? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Yes, thanks. Next, we'll go on to reports of officers. Items 3.1 through 3.7 will be referred to various committees. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to make a motion to hold item 3.1 and 3.2 uh, until the, uh, the resolution is uh, drawn up about the garbage fee. Second. Second. Moved and do you, you want to hold those? Or I want to hold those too. I'm not, I don't want to work on that budget until I find out what's going to happen with that garbage fee. And again, I think there's too many other individuals that are in this room right now that, that need to be brought up to date as to what's transpired since we had the garbage fee and, and incurred uh, some, uh, I was going to say, we had a garbage fee and then we didn't need it. We had excess funds. So I think I want to have that. Uh, uh, those people be in, involved in that. If, if you're going to hold them, uh, the, you're saying usually it, uh, you hold it for a period of time or a certain date. 
Um, so you want to put a condition on there until after um, the other document is drawn up and it's voted on? That's exactly right. Thank you, Mayor. Is that okay, city attorney? Uh, it's okay procedurally. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a motion, and I believe there was a second. Who was the second, please? I think we had a couple of them. I'll second it if nobody else does. We have a second from Alderman Bourne. That motion uh, is on the floor. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, can somebody, um, Attorney McLean or um, President Hammond, somebody address the issue of uh, what this does to the timeline for the budgeting process if we were to do this? Because um, it's my understanding we're on a fairly you know, tight timeline and when we had this mapped out to have uh, the budget process go through uh, the committees twice and, and then come back and um, I just want to know what the implications are of doing this before we vote and do it. If you want to, uh, th there would be some implications and I don't have the timeline that was drawn up by the finance department uh, but they had a fairly aggressive time frame as far as getting the, uh, the documents out to the various standing committees for their review. Um, I don't know if Mr. Modio can address that or not, but the, uh, holding it until such time as there was action taken on the uh, this document to be drafted regarding the garbage fee uh, obviously delays review by the standing committees of the various departmental budgets. And again, the uh, finance director's uh, memo today said they need to be back by August 24th. So you could start in your committees taking a look at the budgets and still delay any decision that you're going to make and send back to the finance committee and the council until after you pass the, or, 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 uh, or whatever you do with the other document you're waiting for. Uh, moving on, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Alder person uh, Hammond uh, stated that earlier we should go into this uh, discussion with the assum uh, assumption that it is going away. And personally, I don't see any reason why this budget cannot be referred to the committees. And if that committee so chooses to hold it within their committee, there are other committees that would like to take a crack at this and, and have time with it. So I personally will be voting against holding this. This needs to go to the committees so we can thoroughly vet them. And once again, we should go into it with the assumption that it's going away. Thank you very much for those comments. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I would concur with that. Um, in addition, you know, we've got staff and various other departments that report to various standing committees. Um, I know finance, for example, has several that we need to get in and in the course of the next two months. Uh, again, I'm going under the assumption because currently the ordinance states that the garbage fee doesn't exist after December 31st, that it's not going to exist. But there are a lot of other good things that we can be working on the budget. Um, you know, void of having resolution to that. You know, I can appreciate Alderman Heidemann's sentiments, but um, the garbage fee is not the only issue budgetary that we face. So this thing needs to get to its standing committees. Um, some have fewer charges than others, but those that have many charges need to get um, uh, those reviews underway and happening. So I'm gonna vote against this as well. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk, oh, oops, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, regardless how this vote goes, it would still be at the discretion of the committee chairman whether they want to schedule that on their agenda before this other issue is taken care of. Is that correct, Attorney McLean? If this, gets, if this, if this document from Mr. Amodio gets referred to the Public Works Committee, the chairman has the discretion of whether to put it on the agenda or not before the other issue regarding the garbage fee is taken care of. Is that correct? Uh, in the first instance, I would agree with that, uh, Alderman Bourne, but Robert's rules do provide that if something is not placed on the agenda, members of the committee, and I, uh, the number would escape me, but I believe it's three members of the committee could demand that a particular document be placed on the agenda, even if the committee chair was not in favor of doing that. That's just under Robert's rules of order. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Hammond. No, I'm good. You good? Okay. If there's no other discussion, then will the clerk please call the roll and passage? Okay. The, the motion is to um, hold 3.1 and 3.2. Mm -hmm. 
until a resolution is drafted and passed by council. Is, voted on. is there a timeline that the mayor requested? Is there a date that we're the, holding um, this to? It, 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 the, uh, one would imagine that could be introduced at our next council meeting. It would lie over, be referred to a committee, and come back at uh, later on that month for a final vote. So that would be our second meeting in August. Everybody know the motion? Okay. So an I, an I is to hold, correct? Uh, the motion is to hold 3.1 and 3.2. Okay, thank you. Okay. Five eyes, ten no's. Motion's defeated. Um, the, those items uh, 3.1 through 3.7 will be referred to the various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 and 4.2 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. And under reports of committees, item 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing recommending denying a beverage operator's license 0432 based on his failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the licensed activity. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Michael Henschel here this evening? He is here. Um, the committee voted three to one to deny the license. Um, he had in 2013 a conviction of possession of a THC. Um, it did occur at a park. Um, right now he works at a Southside Q Mart. Um, of course, if he gets the license, he can use that license anywhere. It can be a Q Mart, a tavern, a wherever he would uh, want to go with that. So the committee voted three to one to deny it. Michael, would you like to make any comments? Please step to the podium. Hello, um, I would just like to point out a few things through all this. Um, I am aware that what happened was dumb. I am aware that it was a childish, stupid mistake. I have not partaken in any of those activities since then. I have no convictions or nothing other than that. Um, I'm currently just trying to keep my beverage operator's license so I can maintain working a normal shift and everything at Q the Southside Q Mart and hopefully from there take the next step into, I recently was going to college but I had to exit that because of my living arrangements in, she in Sheboygan <coughs> had fallen through but assuming I can keep working at Q Mart I'd like to go back to college at UW Sheboygan for microbiology and keep moving forward with things. Okay, thank you very much for those comments. Any other discussion? Alderman Bourne. Uh, if the gentleman's uh, supervisor or boss, I believe, is in the audience, could we hear from uh, the supervisor with maybe his work history and whether he's always working alone, things like that, please? Is there, if there's no objection, please come forward. Could I have your name, please? Lisa Jansen. Lisa Jansen? Yes. Okay. Pull the mic down. There you go. Um, Michael does work alone sometimes. Usually it's about two to three hours. We have cameras at Q Mart and they also have audio. So we're able to go in and check on our employees and see how they're working. And we do that consistently because we don't want our employees to be, not that they wouldn't card, but maybe they might not think that they're old enough for or you know they might misjudge the age so we tell them 40 and under so we go back and watch Michael had an instance um, last week where a man came in and offered him money to give him beer without a license without a ID and also after the hours and Michael refused it and I caught that on camera so I know he's doing what he should be doing at work I've reviewed it many times also with cigarette sales too so okay thank you for those comments mr. mayor yes Ms. Jansen, if I could ask a question. Yep. Go ahead, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, his work, is he 
shows up on time? Is yep. he? You know? He's he's never missed any work. He's um, <clears throat> been there about a month and a half now. He's covered like three shifts. Um, I left to go to Spain for a week, and I came back, and I got re good reports from my assistant manager and another executive manager that I brought from another store to cover, and they all gave him good reports. So. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Lassar, did you have a comment? Thank you. When we um, had the discussion in, in law and licensing, I asked Michael um, when he had stopped using marijuana, and he said a couple months ago. And his charge was in 2013, and I'm not feeling comfortable supporting having him get his license. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I can just ask uh, the supervisor, I guess what would be your recommendation? Obviously, we have concerns about you know, the public safety side, but you obviously have a business concern you know, and, and have a business to run. I guess I would just I'd bluntly ask you, you know, do you support Michael getting his license and being an employee of your store? I do. He's a good hard worker. He's not shown anything that would make me feel that he would do something the wrong way. I watch how he interacts with people of all ages and, you know, from the younger kids to the older, all different walks of life. And I don't see anything that would make me assume that I shouldn't be here or I wouldn't be here. Any other discussion? Alderman Lassar. I wonder if you could tell me how often your company does drug testing? We do not do drug testing. You do not do drug no, testing? Somebody's hurt at work. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Can you excuse them? Thank you very much. Alderman 5.1 is before us. The clerk, please call the roll. Clarify the vote. Sorry, the vote is to accept and adopt to deny. To deny. Okay, thank you. I I'm sorry. I would be to deny. To deny. Okay, sorry. I had a brief point of order. Brian? There he goes. Five eyes, ten no's. Motion uh, fails. Item. Mm. Alderman Van Akron. Seeing that that motion fail, I, I will make a motion to grant his license. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? I'm sorry, who did second? Thank you. The voting's open. Grant. <clears throat> John. Ten eyes, five no's. Motion passes. Moving on to 5.2 is an RC by law and licensing recommending denying a beverage operator's license 0423 based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, and his record as a habitual law violator. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Documents on the floor. Under discussion. Is Curtis Gabriels here this evening? He is not. The committee voted four to zero to deny his license um, based on recent uh, activity that we were not sure is the proper thing to be having in a bar. Okay, thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 4. Point, rather 5.3 is an RC by law and licensing recommending denying a beverage operator's license number 0392 based upon her failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on the application and the record of violations related to the license activity and her failure to co cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's on the floor for discussion. Is Sophia Olenek here this evening? She's not here. We invited her um, on two different occasions to the meeting and she did not show up. Thank you for that discussion. Anyone else? If not, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> 14 eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 4. Point, rather 5.4 is an RC by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license number 0397 based upon her failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on the application, her record of violations related to the license activity, and her record as a habitual law violator and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Sarah Hall here this evening? She's not, and she was also invited on two different occasions and did not appear. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 .5 is an RC by finance recommending passing an initial resolution regarding the industrial development revenue bond financing for, for Polyfab Corporation project. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, item 5.6 is an RC by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2014 budget, establishing appropriation for information technology servers. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. The motion is before us. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Okay then. <laughs> 15 eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.7 is a RC by fi Finance Committee recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2014 budget to establish revenue and appropriations for the 2014 Community Block Grant Entitlement Program. Alderman, Van Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes and one abstention. Motion passes. Under ordinances, item 6.1 and 6.2 be referred to various committees. Other matters, city attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. 7.1 is communication submitting a concern from Bill Dreps regarding his concerns with traffic safety and parking issues at King Park, as well as the noise pollution due to food truck Friday. Uh, that will be referred to public protection and safety. 7.2 is an RO by the Chief of Police. 
submitting a quarterly report showing the activities of the department for the period commencing April 1 and ending June 30, 2014. That will also go to public protection and safety. 7.3 is an RO by the building inspector, building inspection department, uh, submitting reports for the months of March, April, May, and June 2014. That will go to public protection and safety. 7.4 is a resolution by Alderperson Hammond to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2014 budget. That will go to the Finance Committee. 7.5 is a resolution by Alderperson Bellinger authorizing the sale of city-owned property formerly known as 1020 and 1022 Erie Avenue. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 7.6 is a resolution by Alderperson Hammond authorizing the submittal of a grant application to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Boating and Fishing State and Federal Programs for funding to complete a feasibility study on wave attenuation options in the Harbor Center Marina. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.7 .7 is a resolution being a relocation order of the City of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. That will lie over. 7.8 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2015 and June 30, 2016. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 7.9 is an ordinance by Alderpersons Carlson and Bellinger amending subsection 26-262A and repealing and recreating section 26-554 of the Municipal Code relating to fees for electrical and HVAC permits and inspections so as to reduce the fee per $1,000 estimated cost for projects of a million dollars or greater. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Next is an uh, opportunity to go into closed session, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided under Section 19851G Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning a strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved regarding the property gifted to the city in 1987 by the Heisen Family Foundation and with respect to the Town of Sheboygan versus the City of Sheboygan, Sheboygan County Circuit Court case number 14 CV 0434. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk call the roll in a closed session? Mark? Thank you. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a five minute recess and reconvene. Okay, in open session, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to file document 8.2. Second. I appreciate that motion and support. Any discussion on that document? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderman Hammond? Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion. Um, all those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.